we have one more law to talk about, and that is the law of contraposition. Okay, so if you remember back to what a contrapositive is, it is a uh, conditional statement where the hypothesis and conclusion have been reversed and they have both been negated. Okay, the law of contraposition says that the truth value of a conditional and its contrapositive are the same, so the truth values. So if a conditional is true, then its contrapositive is true. If a conditional is false, then its contrapositive is false. Okay, um, this, is, this is for true conditionals and false conditionals. So if P implies Q is true, then not Q implies not P is also true. And the same goes for false conditionals. Okay. The law of contraposition is an inference. You are inferring that piece of information. I want you to note that if P implies Q is true and we are given that Q is false, then it can be logically concluded that P is false. This is a, a, an interesting thing to think about. This is also called the modus tollens rule of inference. It's a very, very old rule in logic. Okay, and I have an image citation right here. I'm going to sketch an image for you. I'm going to sketch a little graph here. What this is saying is, what the law of contraposition is saying, let's say that I have a setup inside another setup, okay? And so I'm saying that these are like this, okay? And what I'm saying here is that if A, then B, all right? So if it's in A, then it implies that it's in B. If it's in this circle here, and all of this circle is inside the B circle, okay, then A implies B has to be true, okay. Then if it's, so this would be the conditional, okay. Then the contrapositive here The contrapositive here is not B implies not A, which also has to be true, but let's check it out. So if it's not in B, if it's not in B, then it is outside, it's outside of this circle, the B circle, right? And if it's somewhere out here, somewhere not inside of B, then there's no way that it can be back in A, see? So if it's not in B, then it certainly is not in A, because it has to be back in here to even be back in there. Okay? That is the diagram for that. Let's go over some examples here. Okay? If A implies B is true, then A is true, and A is true, then B is true. Okay? What statement is logically equivalent to, if it is cold, then we go skiing? So here is our Q, excuse me, here is our P, and here is our Q. Here is our Q. And so we need to flip them. So this needs to come up here, and this needs to go over here, and we need to negate both of them. So if we don't go skiing, then it isn't cold, okay? Okay, let me break this off a little bit more here, Shh, like that. Okay, now, see if these are logically equivalent or not. 
R implies T, not R implies not T. Well, they're not equivalent because even though we negated both the R and the T, we haven't switched their order. So this is a no. Okay, that one is a no. Okay, T implies not B. B implies not T. So we've switched them. We've taken the B over here and the T over here, and we've negated both. Because what is not not B? Well, it's just B. And then what is not T? It's that. So this is a yes. Not P implies Q. And Q implies not P. Well, what we've done here is we've just taken them and flipped them, but we haven't inverted anything. We haven't, or excuse me, we haven't negated anything. So this is a no. Remember, for contrapositive, you have to flip and negate both. Okay. Sam will reach home plate if Doug hits a triple. Well, let's rewrite this. This says if. Doug hits a triple, then Sam will do what? Then Sam will reach home base. Okay, so this is really what we're saying here. So if Doug hits a triple, then Sam will reach home base. If Sam doesn't reach home base or plate, then Doug did not hit a triple. So we took the hitting a triple and reaching home base and we flipped them. So reaching home base and we we flipped them and we negated them. So doesn't reach home base and hits a triple comes down here not hit a triple. So the answer here is yes. These are logically equivalent statements.